everyone. I'm Sunil Singh, Math Subject Advisor for Pearson at Excel. In this video, I'll be taking you some of the changes for the May-June 2022 assessments. Please note that this video is for the Pearson at Excel International GCSEs in Mathematics. That's Maths A, Maths B, and further pure mathematics. Uh, there are many advanced information documents out there from different awarding bodies. It's important that you are using the correct one. So this is for Pearson International GCSE qualifications. Firstly, there are no changes to the assessment in May, June 2022 for Maths A and for Maths B. As you can see, Maths A is still offered at the high-end foundation tier, two papers each, both two hours. Maths B continues to be offered at the higher only, one paper one hour 30 minutes and the other paper two hours and 30 minutes. So there are no changes to the structure. Similarly, there are no changes to the structure of the further pure mathematics for May and June. We continue to have two papers, as you can see. So this is just as we have had in the past. So regarding the changes for summer 2022, the Department of Education have confirmed the exams are going ahead. They've put in place a number of measures to support students due to the disruption caused by COVID. Um, so it was agreed that our international qualifications for GCSE Maths A, Maths B, and further pure mathematics would receive advanced information. This advanced information was available to everyone on the 7th of February in 2022 to help support you the revision. It's really important to note that the purpose of this advanced information was to help you revision, but not to narrow teaching and learning. Now, as we go through the advanced information, shortly I will cover the advanced information general guidelines and principles first. Uh, firstly, however, where could you find these documents? They're able to download them from the relevant qualification pages. So if you, for example, go to the international GCSEs and go to Maths A, you'll find the advanced information documents linked on the upper right-hand corner. However, I've also linked all of the documents from the Maths and Statistics page. And if you click on the link at the bottom, it will take your document that has all the information, including any updates and so on, which I will cover again later. Now, again, make sure you have the correct advanced information. Your teachers will be able to guide you with this. There have been changes. I will give you details about the changes in later slides, but also show you where it's all linked. Uh, your teachers can use this advanced information to support you and prepare you for the exams. But remember that the advanced information cannot be taken into the examinations. So the general principles about the advanced information. So in the next few slides, what I'll do is I'll cover how the advanced information actually works, how the information is presented. I'll speak about formula sheets and so on. So key thing to remember as a guiding principle, the advanced information is not used to narrow teaching and learning. The idea is to help you manage your revision and your preparation prior to the exams. You will see, especially for mathematics, um, some questions may still be answerable using more than one area specified in the content including the ones that are not listed. And I'll go in more detail about that in a bit. Um, there may be aspects or parts of this specification which are not identified, which does help provide knowledge and understanding in some of the questions that you'll be answering. Uh, again, your teachers are the best people to explain this to you. Also, it's um, reassuring to know that you will be given credit for any relevant knowledge that you use in answering a particular question, even if it is drawn from areas that are not listed. Now, for specifications with synoptic assessments, topics not explicitly given in the advanced information may appear. So by synoptic assessments, what we mean, uh, we're referring to um, assessments where you're now drawing on knowledge from different parts of the uh, specification. So you may be answering a particular question, but you'll be using knowledge from different, different topics. So that's really what synoptic assessments mean. It's all linked. The key idea is that everything's linked. So again, speak to your teacher. They'll be able to guide you about this. When you look at the advanced information, and again, I'll show you how content is presented for each paper, the list show the major focus of the content for the examinations. Questions will be drawn from one or more of the areas of the specification content. Now, you may not have seen the specification itself. Certainly, your teachers would have. But just to keep in mind, and I'll speak to you more about synoptic assessment later, it really means that you should be able to cover all of the specification. You may be also wondering at this point, then how does that help? I will explain later how you can use the advanced information for revision. One important thing to cover, to make note of at this point, is that when you look at the advanced information, it's given in what we call specification order. 
Now, again, if you haven't seen the specification, it's nothing to be concerned about. What it really means is that, because I get a lot of questions about this, is that will the assessments we do in May and June look similar to the advanced emission in terms of the structure? Will it be laid out in that way? Will it be in that order? No, it doesn't have to be in that order. The advanced information is given in what we call specification order because that's how the specification was designed. So it just made sense to drop the advanced information in a similar way. Your assessments in May or June would be just like any other paper. The questions could be, the topics in the questions could be in any order. Okay, so it's important to just remember that slight distinction. Again, now, speaking about how the information is presented, when you go into the advanced information, you'll notice firstly that we've collated by paper. In other words, we've put the topics for the uh, assessments in the uh, order of the paper. So, for example, for Maths A, where you have high end foundation, we might start off by firstly listing all the topics in the foundation paper. But then, if you go, for example, to Maths B, which is only offered at the high anyway, we might just label it as paper one and paper two. But again, firstly, it's put in the order of the paper. Then you'll see, as you scroll down the advanced information further on, we'll say we have grouped it by series. So we put all of the advanced information together for that series. Just, this just makes it easier for you to use. It's just a different way of laying out the information. It's nothing that you should be concerned about. It just makes it easier for you to see what's on each paper. Then, at the end, a summary, if you want to call it that, of all the advanced information for those papers. Uh, again, about how the information is presented. Now, there have been some updates. Logically, these, these will happen with any documents produced by any organization. There are updates. It's really important that you make sure you have the latest version. Again, if you click on the link on the Maths and Statistics page, it will take you uh, to a document I've prepared that has lists all the changes for the different papers. So you simply select the advanced information that you're using, and it will explain to you what the changes were. Very largely typographical changes, so nothing to be really concerned about. When you see a sidebar in the advanced information, that shows you where the changes were made. And details of those changes are given in the link provided in the document I've prepared. You will also notice on the advanced information that there are some papers further down that are listed with the R suffix. Now, those are really uh, regional papers. That's all it means. So again, your teachers will be able to guide you about which one you should use, and you make sure that you're using the correct one. So papers that have the R suffix are basically regional papers. So they can be set anywhere in the world apart from the UK. Right? Although the non-R papers can be set outside the UK. So again, you simply check with your teachers which advanced information should I be using, and then you focus on the appropriate one. Now, I'll take you through some FAQs, uh, and I've put these together from questions I've been getting a lot from uh, students and teachers. Will there be formula sheets for international GCSE Maths A and Maths B? So international GCSE uh, Maths A currently has a formula sheet, and this will continue, same as in the past. Again, please note that there's a separate formula sheet, one for higher and one for foundation. As you might remember, or as you'll see if you're working with past papers your teachers, this formula sheet is provided on page two of the question paper. International Maths B, however, um, certain formula are provided in the question, and this will continue. No additional formula sheet will be given. Now, I suspect that I've been getting a lot of questions about this because people have noticed that with the non-regional papers or in the UK, uh, there's been formula sheets provided for GCS Maths and U. That's only because they never had this kind of provision that you have in these papers. So there was that support was put in place. But you already have this in place. This will continue. There'll be nothing additional added on. Uh, further maths, uh, same thing. Uh, your formula sheet is provided on page two of the question paper. Nothing extra will be provided. There'll be no changes to the formula. It's exactly the same as it was in the past. Now, some general questions, and I'll go through these quickly because we want to focus more on the other aspect. Um, advanced information, why does your advanced information look different to other exam boards? Now, to be fair, the exam boards did work together to ensure that the uh, qualifications are compatible as possible. But logically, or understandably, there'll be some slight differences in the way it is presented because we might have laid out our content differently in our specifications. What does it mean when it states that questions will be drawn from one or more of the indicated areas of the specific content? And you'll find we'll come back to this point repeatedly through the presentation. This means that questions won't necessarily focus solely on a single bullet point identified in the advanced information. Qu 
questions could draw on knowledge or, or one or more of the indicated bullet points and they could basically be very broad questions. That is why it's so important not to narrow the teaching and learning and to try and cover all of the uh, content. So even if a bullet point is mentioned, it won't be about everything about the bullet point. It could be one aspect of it. Why do some qualifications have optional content and others have advanced information? I've got a lot of questions about this because a lot of people feel, oh, it seems unfair. Why is it that in maths we are not leaving out certain topics, whereas other subjects, they have what is called optionality. Now, optionality means that you can't really just say this part A, part B, or whatever, leave out those topics, completely find the assessment, and that might make things so much easier for you. However, in mathematics, that doesn't work for us. As I explained before about synoptic assessments, everything's linked, and it really doesn't work in maths to actually exclude a particular topic. It wouldn't be sensible to do that because, for example, number work permeates everything that you do. Similarly, other topics could be used in some shape or form. So optionality doesn't work for maths. If topics are not listed in the advanced information, can you assume they are not going to be examined in the assessment? So repeatedly, no. If a topic is not there, please ensure that you have covered it. And I'll speak later on about what's the difference and how does advanced information actually help if we have to go over everything. But just to make that clear, if a topic is not listed, it could still appear in some shape or form. Uh, I get this request all the time. The second one, could we have lists of topics not included in advanced information? Now, we will not be drawing up lists like that for any center or for any student because it's not a good idea to do that. Because what might happen, and I know teachers are taking time to do this to try and help you, understandably, but then we don't want to be focusing on those areas that ca carry very few marks. And again, I'll explain that in a later slide. This is a very popular one that came up, which actually follows on from the previous slide. People list certain examples to me and say, for example, circle theorems are not listed there explicitly. It's in the specification, but why is it not in the advanced information? And therefore, does it mean that I don't have to learn circle theorems? No, you do have to cover circle theorems, because if you think about it, circle theorems in themselves can be used to solve a larger geometric problem. So if you take any geometric problem, this also ties in with what I was explaining about it can draw on knowledge from different areas. In that problem, you could have, say, um, a circle theorem helping to solve part of the problem. It might be a five, six, seven mark question. The circle theorems could be just part of that solution to help you find one as part of the angle, one angle perhaps. You could have a triangle in that shape. So you might have to know knowledge of triangles adding up to 80. You might have maybe a tangent hitting the circle. So uh, And so you'll have to know angles on a straight line. So as you can see from just that one simple example, you could have many topic areas covered within one question. That is why it's so important to have a knowledge of everything, really, but focusing on the topics listed because they will carry the large information. So yes, circle theorems can appear because they can be used in themselves to answer a larger geometric problem. Will topics not listed carry fewer marks if they appear in the examination? Yes. The idea here is to avoid the, it being predictable. So by focusing on questions that carry more marks, the advanced information does not risk undermining the qualification. This is the important one for you. What is the point of advanced information you have to cover and revise everything? Now, it's important to note that the advanced information was not intended to identify aspects of the specification content that don't you don't need to revise. Right? It was never designed for that. It's intended to support your revision. The idea is now that you will focus on the content that carry the most marks. So what's what is in the advanced information will appear. Remember that in a normal series, you wouldn't have this information in advance to guide you about how to focus your vision. So in a normal series, prior to the pandemic, students had to learn everything, not knowing which aspects to focus on. Whereas this time, the advanced information does give you an advantage because you can prioritize your revision. How can we use the advanced information revision? We've covered most of that. Just to clarify a few further points, all the topics listed will appear in some shape or form, so you know that the time and energy you're spending on that will not be wasted. Uh, they will focus on those topics that carry the biggest weight in the exams. Things that are not listed may still appear. We're not saying guaranteed it'll appear, but may appear, but they'll carry slightly fewer marks. And I gave you an example of the one with circle theorems. So if we move on from there, now, where can I find more help? If you go to our website, and visit the student support pages. It's got a link there that will take you to many documents that will give you more information, FAQ documents and so on. Some of them are also, like for example, you go to JCQ website, it's got FAQs for students, teachers, so there is support and help available. 
Thank you. I hope you found this video useful and good luck with your exams. Goodbye.